One day, Miffy's mother took a large tray of fresh biscuits out of the oven. Oh, they smell delicious, said Miffy. And there are so many, Mother. Maybe I can take some to Boris and Barbara Bear. They love biscuits too. That's a nice thought, Miffy, said her mother. I will put some in a paper bag and you can take it to Boris and Barbara on your scooter. Miffy put the bag of biscuits into her scooter basket and headed out to the woods where Boris and Barbara lived. Just then she heard the sound of barking. Snuffy was running after her. Good morning, Snuffy, said Miffy. Would you like to come along with me to visit Boris and Barbara Bear? They travelled along together into the woods. But the ground in the woods was very bumpy. This didn't bother Snuffy, who ran around happily. She ran ahead much faster than Miffy. Miffy had to ride very carefully. When she went over a very large bump, she didn't notice that the bag of biscuits had fallen out. When Miffy arrived at Boris and Barbara's house, Snuffy was already there. Miffy wanted to give Barbara her present, but she realised that it had gone. I wanted to bring you some of Mother's freshly baked biscuits, she said to Barbara, but I have lost them somewhere in the forest. Never mind, said Barbara. I baked some biscuits too, so we can still have a nice little feast. And so they did. When it was time for Miffy to go home, she looked around for Snuffy, but she couldn't see her. I can't go home without Snuffy, said Miffy. She might be lost. Don't worry about Snuffy, said Boris. All dogs know their way home. So Miffy started home on her scooter, but she wondered, where could Snuffy be? Snuffy, Snuffy, she called. Where are you? She went on a bit further and called out again. Snuffy, Snuffy, where are you? Now Miffy was beginning to get a bit worried. Snuffy? 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 Snuffy! Snuffy! Suddenly, Miffy saw the bag that her mother had filled with biscuits. Oh, she said, at least I've found the biscuits. But when she picked up the bag, it was empty. There were no biscuits inside. Then she heard a little sound from behind a tree and went to see what it was. And there was Snuffy, sound asleep, with just a few biscuit crumbs next to her on the ground. So there you are, Snuffy, said Miffy. I see that you had a nice feast on your way home. On a bright and sunny day, Miffy's teacher told the class, Tomorrow we are going to learn about the seasons of the year. Spring, summer, autumn and winter. Miffy and Melanie rode home from school on their scooters. They enjoyed the fine sunny weather. But suddenly dark clouds appeared and it started raining. They had no umbrellas with them, so they hid under a tree. The rain only lasted a short time and soon they were on their way again. But then, 
it began to get very windy. It was difficult to ride their scooters in such a strong wind. Miffy said, Our clothes are not warm enough for this cold wind, Melanie. We must try to get home soon. And just as they got to Miffy's house, it began to rain again. It was so cold that the rain changed to snow. Both girls were glad to be inside, where it was nice and warm. They wondered how there could be so many changes in the weather so quickly. The next day at school, her teacher told the class, each year is divided into four seasons, spring, summer, autumn and winter. This is a picture of spring, she said. What happens in the spring? Aggie raised her hand. I think that spring is when the flowers grow, she said. Winnie said, yes, that's because the sun is getting warmer. Everything grows in the spring. That's right, said the teacher. What about summer? Now Melanie raised her hand and said, I love the summer because it is nice and hot and I can go swimming. Melanie loved to play on the beach. said the teacher. The summer is the warmest season of the year, but after the summer comes autumn. What do you think happens then? Miffy said, In the autumn, the wind blows, it gets colder, and all the leaves fall off the trees, and then everyone knows that the winter is coming. Very good, said the teacher. And what happens in the winter? Miffy said, Well, I have to wear my warm clothes because the winter is very cold and usually there is a lot of snow. You are smart little bunnies, said the teacher. After school, Miffy said to Melanie, I wonder what season it is now. Melanie started to laugh. I think that we're having all the seasons right now. Yesterday it was sunny, then it rained and then it snowed. Yes, said Miffy. We had a whole year's seasons in just one day. And they both laughed. You have so many wonderful tools, Grandpa, said Miffy. In Grandpa Bunny's workshop, there were hammers and a saw and other special tools. Will you show me how to make something with your tools, Grandpa? asked Miffy. Grandma Bunny was surprised. I thought I'd teach you how to bake a cake today, she said. There were so many interesting things to do when Miffy visited her grandparents that Miffy didn't know which to do first. Well, some little bunnies like to learn how to sew or do things in the kitchen, said Grandpa. But they can also learn how to make things with tools. In fact, it's the same thing, said Grandma Bunny. Whether you bake a cake or make a bookshelf, you have to put certain things together. I know what to do, said Miffy. I will bake a cake and I will make a wooden box to put the cake in. That's a wonderful idea, said Grandpa Bunny. First you can make the cake, and then we will know how big to make the box. I will bring it home to Mother and Father as a present, said Miffy. Miffy went into the kitchen with her grandma. She began to put together everything she would need to make a cake. First we must measure the right amount of flour and sift it into a mixing bowl 
said Grandma Bunny. Then we must prepare the eggs, milk, sugar and chocolate powder in just the right amounts and mix them together. Miffy used special measuring cups to be sure she used the right amount of each ingredient. It was all written in Grandma's cookery book. When everything was mixed together, the cake mixture was ready to be baked. Miffy poured the mixture into a special round cake tin. She measured the tin with Grandma's ruler. Then it went into the hot oven. Now Miffy was ready to make the box for the cake. She told her grandpa how big the cake would be. And he showed her how to use the same ruler to measure the wood for the box. She marked the wood at just the right length and used one of grandpa's clamps to hold each piece to his workbench. The clamp held the wood steady so Grandpa could saw each plank to the right size. Miffy liked to see Grandpa working with the saw, back and forth and back and forth until it cut right through the wood. Now she had pieces of wood for the bottom and the top of the box and for the four sides. She used a hammer and some nails and together they nailed all of the pieces together. Just as the box was finished, Miffy smelt something delicious in the air. The cake is ready, called Grandma Bunny from her kitchen. It has finished baking. What a beautiful cake! And how lovely it smelt when Grandma took it out of the oven. Look, said Grandpa Bunny. It fits perfectly. When Miffy arrived home that day, she was a very proud little bunny. She had learnt that careful work and putting the right things together could make a delicious cake or a beautiful box. Father Bunny and Mother Bunny were very proud of her. I have a surprise, Mother, said Miffy. A very nice surprise. Do you want to guess where my surprise is hidden? Oh, yes. Um, I think it's in your room, said Miffy's mother. So they went to Miffy's room. Is your surprise here? asked her mother. Miffy laughed. No, 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 she said. Hmm, said Mother Bunny. Maybe it's here. No, 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 said Miffy. My surprise is not hidden in my room. Maybe it's in the kitchen, said Miffy's mother. Let's go and have a look. Miffy's mother looked into the kitchen cupboard. She looked all around the kitchen. Miffy danced and laughed. No, no, no! It's not in here, she said. Let's go and look in the garden then, said Mother Bunny. So they went outside. Miffy's mother looked all around the garden. I can't see any secret out here, she said. My surprise isn't out here, said Miffy. She was having great fun with her mother. Then along came Snuffy. She barked happily when she saw Miffy. Well, said Mother Bunny, where is your surprise? If it's not in your room, and it's not in the kitchen, and it's not in the garden, then where could it be? 
Miffy said, Let's go inside the house and I'll show you. Finally, Miffy said, It's in my school bag. But her school bag wasn't there. Oh dear, said Miffy. In my school bag was a drawing I made for father. I wanted to surprise him and put the drawing under his pillow. But now it has gone. Just then, Snuffy started to bark. <coughs> Snuffy was carrying Miffy's school bag. Aha, said Miffy's mother. You must have dropped it on your way home. Shall we have a look at your drawing now? It is beautiful, said Mother Bunny. Your father will be very surprised to find it. It's such fun to have a surprise, said Miffy. Thank you, Snuffy, for finding it. Miffy read that in some fairy tales, a fairy could give you three wishes. She wondered what she would wish for if a fairy granted her three wishes. My first wish would be that my mother and father would love me forever, she said. But she already knew that her mother and father would love her forever. So she tried to think of another wish. She decided to go for a walk. She was sure that she could think better while she was walking. There was Snuffy, who was, as always, very happy to see Miffy. Do you want to come along with me? asked Miffy. While they were outside walking, Miffy and Snuffy met Aggie, who had her arm in a sling. Hello, Aggie, said Miffy. What happened to your arm? I fell down while I was roller skating, said Aggie, and I hurt it. I wish that your arm gets better soon, said Miffy. Thank you, Miffy, said Aggie. That was Miffy's first wish. If my wish is magic, Aggie's arm will be better tomorrow, she thought as she waved goodbye to her friend. As Miffy and Snuffy walked towards the forest, it began to rain. Miffy hadn't remembered to take an umbrella on her walk. Oh dear, said Miffy. I wish it would never rain and always be sunny. Miffy was surprised when it quickly stopped raining and the sun came out. I've wasted my second wish, she said. If there is only sunshine and no rain, the trees won't grow. Now she had only one wish left. My last wish would be for something very nice, she said to Snuffy. Miffy thought and thought as she walked along, looking around and trying to think of something important to wish for. She walked through a field full of flowers. Miffy thought about her mother and wanted to pick some flowers to bring home to her. But my mother likes yellow flowers best, she told Snuffy. I see lots of red flowers and lots of blue flowers. Shall I use my last wish to find some yellow flowers? Just around the bend, there was a whole field of lovely yellow flowers. Now I can use my last wish for something else, said Miffy. I will wish for an ice cream. Miffy picked a lovely bunch of flowers for her mother. Having three wishes is a wonderful thing, said Miffy as they began walking home.
When Miffy gave Mother Bunny the bunch of yellow flowers, she was very happy. Oh, Miffy, she said. These are lovely. They are my favourite yellow flowers. I saved my last wish for a nice ice cream, said Miffy. Do you know what I wish for? I wish that my little Miffy will always be just as sweet as she is now. And she gave Miffy a big, squeezy bunny hug. Then Mother Bunny went into the kitchen and gave Snuffy a nice bowl of fresh water. And Miffy and ice cream. Holiday time had arrived. When the school term was over, Miffy and her mother and Father Bunny were ready to go on their holiday. Miffy looked at a map so that she could see where they were going. One year they went to the seashore. This year they would go to the mountains. Mother Bunny said, we must pack our warm clothes. Why is that, Mother? asked Miffy. It's summertime. You will see, Miffy. Perhaps you will be surprised. Father Bunny made sure their car was safe for the long mountain trip. Off they went. Over beautiful hills, through the woods, and then up into the mountains. Miffy noticed that as they got higher, it became colder. When they stopped to look out at a wonderful view, they all put on their warm clothes. As they drove even higher, Miffy started to see patches of snow on the ground. That's strange, said Miffy. Snow in summertime? Now do you see, Miffy? The higher in the mountains you are, the colder it is. On some very high mountains, there is snow all year long, said Mother Bunny. When they arrived at the very top of the mountain, there was snow everywhere. Can we play with the snow? Like in winter time? asked Miffy. Well, why don't we find out? said Father Bunny. Miffy and her parents made a snowman. Then they had fun throwing snowballs. Soon it was time to go back down the mountain again. As they drove lower and lower, it began to get warmer again. Finally they arrived at the shore of a beautiful lake. Here is where we will spend our holiday, said Mother Bunny. Look, Miffy, there's something waiting for you. Another surprise, shouted Miffy. First the snow and now the boat. What a wonderful holiday. As her mother started to make preparations for their camping site, Miffy and her father went to the boat. They climbed into the boat and went off for a nice boat trip around the lake. When they returned, Miffy saw that Mother Bunny had made a campfire and a delicious picnic supper. This really is a wonderful holiday! Every morning, 
Miffy looked out of her window and watched for the post bunny. She hoped that one day a letter or a postcard might come for her. Mother Bunny said, Why don't you go and see if there's any post today, Miffy? Miffy went to the front door to have a look. And there was some post. She picked it up and carried it to the kitchen table. Well, here's this morning's newspaper, said Mother Bunny. And here is a letter for me from your Auntie Alice. And look, Miffy, here is a pretty postcard addressed to you from your friend Melanie. How exciting, said Miffy. Her friend Melanie was on holiday with her parents. The postcard had a pretty postage stamp on it. Look, Mother, here are some little pictures that Melanie drew herself. Melanie has drawn a sun on the postcard, said Miffy. That means they are having lovely weather. And next to the sun, she has drawn some wavy lines like water. That means they are swimming in the ocean. Look, there is even a picture of a brightly coloured fish. Yes, said Miffy's mother. Melanie is a clever little bunny. Her next drawing is a smiling face. So that means they are having a happy time. And look, she has drawn a little picture of herself. So you know that it really is from Melanie. I would like to send a postcard back to Melanie and I will draw a picture of me on it, said Miffy. Here is a postcard you can use, said Miffy's mother. You can also draw some other pictures on it for Melanie. Why don't you draw a picture of our little house? So Miffy took the postcard and her pencil outside and looked carefully at her house. Yes, she thought. My drawing looks just like our house. Then Miffy wanted to draw a flower on her postcard. So she went into her garden, where a lovely flower was growing. She looked at the flower very carefully, and then she drew a picture of it on the postcard. Just then, a butterfly landed on the flower, and Miffy quickly drew a picture of the butterfly. Then Miffy went back inside to finish her drawings. She drew a picture of herself and Melanie. That will show Melanie how much I like her, Miffy thought. Miffy coloured her drawings. She gave the White House a red roof, red shutters and a green window. She made the flower red and the leaves green. She coloured the butterfly yellow. She left the drawing of herself white and coloured the drawing of Melanie brown. They looked very pretty together. Miffy put a stamp on her postcard. Then she walked to the post box and carefully pushed her postcard into the post box. When she walked home, Miffy thought, the post is a wonderful thing. We can be together with our friends even when we are far away from each other. And indeed, Melanie was delighted with her postcard. It was autumn. Leaves were falling and clouds were gathering. Miffy was playing outside with her ball, when suddenly it started to rain heavily. Before her dress got wet, she ran into her house. If you want to play outside, Miffy, you must wear your coat, her mother said. Miffy put on her coat. Just when she was going outside again, Barbara Bear knocked at the door. It has stopped raining, Mrs Bunny. Can Miffy come to the woods with me, please? We can look for beautiful autumn leaves to make decorations. That sounds like a lovely thing to do, Barbara. But it might rain again, so be sure that Miffy wears her coat. 
It was good fun looking for pretty leaves with Barbara. They found some yellow leaves, some red leaves, and some brown leaves. These will make beautiful decorations, said Barbara. Look, the sun has come out again, and it's getting warm. We can hang up our coats on this tree branch while we go to look for more leaves. Soon their baskets were full of pretty leaves. Are you thirsty from all that work, Miffy? asked Barbara. Let's go to my house. I have some cool lemonade we can drink. They went inside Barbara's wooden house. Just as they were drinking their lemonade, Miffy looked out of the window and saw that it was raining again very heavily. Oh dear! Our coats, said Barbara. They're still outside hanging on that tree branch. They will be completely soaked. We will be completely soaked if we go out to get them, said Miffy. Don't worry, Miffy, said Barbara. I have an umbrella that is big enough to cover both of us. Under Barbara's umbrella, they ran to the tree where their coats were hanging. They were dripping wet. I can't put on my coat, said Miffy. How will I get home? My mother will be angry if my dress gets wet too. I will walk home with you, Miffy, said Barbara. My umbrella will keep us dry. The two friends were still nice and dry when they reached Miffy's house. Miffy wondered what her mother would say when she saw that Miffy had come home without her coat. When Mother Bunny saw them under the umbrella, she was pleased that Miffy had not got wet in the rain. Miffy, where is your coat? I'm sorry, my coat is soaking wet, said Miffy, and I left it hanging on a tree branch. That's all right, Miffy, said Mother Bunny. You can go and fetch your coat when it stops raining. Thank you, Barbara, for keeping Miffy dry with your umbrella. Come in and have some tea. After tea, it was still raining. Miffy and Barbara looked at all the pretty leaves they had collected. What shall we make with all of our leaves? asked Miffy. As it's still raining, said Barbara, how about a rain hat? Yes, said Miffy. And as I don't have my coat, I will make a rain cape. Soon Barbara had a fabulous rain hat. And Miffy had a colourful cape. They ran outside and were surprised to find that it had finally stopped raining. Come on, Miffy. Now that the sun is shining, let's go and collect our coats. OK, said Miffy. And this time, we shall bring the umbrella, the new hat and the new cape, just in case it starts to rain again. One bright day, the doorbell at Miffy's house rang. Grandpa and Grandma Bunny had come to visit. Hello, Miffy, said Grandma Bunny. We thought we would come and visit you in your house. But as it is such a lovely warm day, we thought we could take you to the beach instead. Oh, how wonderful, shouted Miffy. I would love to show you the beach. What a nice idea, said Mother Bunny. I will pack you a nice lunch so you can have a picnic. And you can tell Miffy what the beach was like when you were young. Father Bunny said, I will drive you to the beach in our car. So off they went in Father Bunny's car. When they arrived, Grandpa Bunny said, When we were young, we used to make castles in the sand. Perhaps we can make some more today. Yes, said Father Bunny. I remember making sand castles too. We can all make some together. I did it too, said Grandma Bunny. I remember that the sand had to be wet. So Miffy picked up her bucket and went down close to the water. She filled the bucket with wet sand and brought it up to where the others were sitting. Mm -hmm. 
Miffy had to do it many times because it took a lot of sand to make a proper castle. How beautiful it was! And just as the castle was finished, along came Melanie, Miffy's bunny friend. Would you like to play ball with me, Miffy? asked Melanie. Oh, yes, said Miffy. Don't go too far, said Father Bunny. You might get lost. We won't get lost, Father, said Miffy, because we know that you will be where the sand castle is. So Miffy and Melanie ran off, kicking the ball along the beach. Soon, they were quite far away. Meanwhile, the water was slowly rising up the beach. Oh dear, said Grandma Bunny. The water is coming very close to our sand castle. We'd better move back a bit. And sure enough, the water soon came up and washed away the whole castle. Miffy and Melanie were tired and they started to go back. Where is your family, Miffy? asked Melanie. I can't see them. Don't worry, Melanie, said Miffy. They are right by our sandcastle. But Miffy looked and looked and she didn't see the sandcastle. She didn't know that the seawater had washed it away. She and Melanie walked and walked along the beach. Where is that castle? said Miffy. Maybe we really are lost, Melanie. Miffy, Melanie, we're here. The sea came up and washed our castle away. It's nice that our houses are not made of sand, said Miffy. They were all very happy to be together again. Miffy was on her way to visit her Auntie Alice. Along the way, she walked through a meadow full of colourful flowers with butterflies fluttering all around. But look, what did she see on the ground? A caterpillar was eating a leaf from one of the beautiful flowers. Why are you eating that leaf, little caterpillar? asked Miffy. I will take you to my Auntie Alice's house and she will give you something proper to eat. She carefully picked up the little caterpillar and carried it with her to Auntie Alice's house. Miffy found Auntie Alice busy in her garden. What do you have there? asked Auntie Alice. It's a naughty caterpillar, said Miffy. It was eating a leaf from a beautiful flower. Auntie Alice laughed. Caterpillars must eat leaves, Miffy, said Auntie Alice. It's what they need to make their great change. What change is that? asked Miffy. You will see, said Auntie Alice. It is something so magical, you will hardly believe it. Now Miffy was very excited. She wondered what the great change could be. Auntie Alice carefully placed the little caterpillar near some tasty leaves. You can come each day to watch the caterpillar, Miffy, and feed it some more leaves, she said. You will see something very surprising. Miffy was very curious. She loved surprises, and she could hardly wait for her next visit. Each time Miffy came to Auntie Alice's house, she fed the little caterpillar more leaves, but she didn't see any change at all. You must be patient, Miffy, said her Auntie Alice. The surprise will come. On her next visit, Miffy was very sad. Oh dear, look, the caterpillar is all wrapped up in white thread. 
That is called a cocoon, said Auntie Alice. The caterpillar made it. It's asleep inside. Next week, you will see the great surprise. Miffy was so excited that the next week, she brought her friend Aggie with her to see what in the world the great change would be. They watched, but nothing happened. The white cocoon just lay there, very still. Then, suddenly, it began to move. It shook, and it quivered, and then it split. The two bunny girls leaned closer. Their eyes were wide with wonder. Out of the cocoon, there came not a caterpillar, but something else. What was it? It crawled out. Then, what a surprise! Wings opened! It really had changed! It's not a caterpillar anymore, shouted Miffy. It's a butterfly! You were right, Auntie Alice. Something magical did happen. A little hungry caterpillar has changed into a beautiful butterfly. The butterfly fluttered its new wings to say goodbye and flew away. One morning, Miffy's mother was getting ready to make breakfast, but she had no carrots. She knew that Miffy loved carrots. I was at the market early this morning, but someone had already bought all the carrots they had. There were no carrots left. I know who has carrots in her garden. Poppy Pig. Poppy Pig has a lovely garden where she grows plenty of carrots. If you run down to Poppy Pig's house, I'm sure she'll give you some of her juicy carrots. But just at that moment, Poppy Pig was sitting down to breakfast. She was eating the very last carrot from her garden. Those carrots were so delicious, I just couldn't resist them. I should have planted lots more, said Poppy. She looked up and saw Miffy coming towards her. Good morning, Miffy. Hello, Poppy, said Miffy. I came because I would love to taste some of your wonderful carrots. Poppy felt awful that she had just eaten her very last carrot. Oh dear, she said. I don't have a single carrot left today. If I plant more carrot seeds now, they won't be ready to eat for weeks. Just then, Auntie Alice arrived, carrying two heavy baskets. Hello, Miffy. Hello, Poppy. I bought all the carrots in the market this morning because I'm going to do something very special with them. And you are both invited for a carrot dinner. You can bring some friends, she said, and off she went on her way home. Miffy and Poppy could hardly wait for the evening to come. Then Boris and Barbara Bear came walking by. Miffy and Poppy told them that Auntie Alice was preparing a carrot dinner for them. Hmm, we don't like carrots very much, said Boris. Oh, but you must come, said Miffy. My Auntie Alice makes such good dinners from carrots. All that afternoon, Auntie Alice was busy in her kitchen. Early that evening, Boris Bear was just about to enjoy a large sandwich. Boris, cried Barbara, what are you doing? You know that we are invited to Auntie Alice's house for a carrot dinner tonight, and it's nearly time to leave. Yes, but I don't like carrots, said Boris. Neither do I, said Barbara. But perhaps if we're hungry enough, we will. Now leave that sandwich and let's go. As they approached Auntie Alice's house, they smelt something delicious. That smells wonderful, said Barbara. It can't be carrots said Boris. 
maybe she's cooking something else. When everybody was ready for dinner, Auntie Alice served them carrot soup, carrot bread, carrot pie and carrot juice. Come on, try a bit, said Auntie Alice. Boris and Barbara Bear enjoyed every bit of Auntie Alice's dinner. Here's a carrot surprise for dessert, said Auntie Alice. Hooray! shouted Boris. What a great carrot feast! On their way home, Boris said to Barbara, That was a delicious meal. Let's plant lots and lots of carrots in our garden. Miffy loved colours. She looked out of her window to see which colours she could spot. She saw that the sky was blue and that the grass was green. She saw red flowers and yellow flowers in her garden. She looked at her hands. I am white, she said, and I'm wearing a blue dress. Isn't it good that we have so many different colours, she thought. Just then the doorbell rang. It was Melanie. Hello, Melanie, said Miffy. Hello, Miffy, said Melanie. I'm going to the playground. Do you want to come with me? Oh, yes, said Miffy. And the two little bunnies went off together. On the way to the playground, they walked past Poppy Pig's house. Poppy Pig's house was red. With a green roof, there were some bright yellow flowers growing in the window box. There was Poppy, just coming from her garden. She had a wheelbarrow full of fresh orange carrots. Hello, Poppy, said Miffy. Hello, Miffy. Hello, Melanie, said Poppy. What a colourful house you have, Poppy, said Melanie. Thank you, said Poppy Pig. Isn't it cheerful? Yes, it's lovely, said Miffy. Miffy and Melanie waved at Poppy and walked on. When they arrived at the playground, Miffy and Melanie played on the yellow swing. They slid down the blue slide. They went round and round on the red merry-go-round. Miffy said to Melanie, Look, there are so many different colours everywhere. Oh, yes, said Melanie. Isn't that fun? And you are white and I am brown. We're different colours too. We're different colours, but we're really the same, said Miffy. Yes, agreed Melanie. We're just two bunny girls, one white and one brown. The two friends laughed when they thought of all the different colours. There are different colours everywhere we look, said Melanie. They saw a green bird and a blue one and brightly coloured butterflies. All around the playground there were colourful flowers. But as they began to walk home, clouds began to gather. The blue sky turned grey. Oh dear, I'm afraid it's going to rain, said Miffy. We'd better hurry. But then a bit of sunlight appeared and the two friends saw the most colourful sight of all. A rainbow, shouted Miffy. They both thought, what a beautiful and colourful world it is.
One morning, Miffy felt very excited. Grandma and Grandpa Bunny were coming to visit. And that always meant something exciting. Grandpa was carrying a large parcel. Mother and father welcomed Miffy's grandparents. Hello, Grandma. Hello, Grandpa. I'm so happy to see you. We're happy to see you too, said Grandma Bunny. We've brought something we think you will like, Miffy, said Grandpa. It's something I made in my own workshop, especially for you. Oh, what is it? asked Miffy. I can hardly wait to see it. Miffy carefully unwrapped the parcel. It was a perfect, brightly painted wooden scooter. How wonderful, said Miffy. It even has a little basket on it. I can carry my teddy bear in the little basket. Thank you. This is a wonderful gift, Grandpa. Miffy wanted to try her scooter straight away. Let's go to the playground and you can ride your scooter, Miffy, said Father Bunny. I'll come with you. Soon Miffy was scooting along with her little teddy bear in the basket. Father Bunny had to run fast to keep up with her. I hope you are enjoying the ride, Teddy, said Miffy. The little bear seemed to be nodding. Yes, I am, Miffy. Soon Miffy and her father came to the playground. Miffy's friend Melanie was playing there. Hello, Melanie, said Miffy. Hello. What a beautiful scooter, Miffy, said Melanie. My grandpa made it for me in his workshop, said Miffy. Would you like to try it? Oh, yes, Miffy, thank you, said Melanie. First, you must ask my teddy which way he wants to go. I think he would like to ride all around the playground. OK said Melanie. I will ride him all around the playground and bring him safely back to you. Miffy watched as Melanie scooted away. She could hardly wait for her to return. She loved her new scooter. returned, she said, This is a wonderful scooter, Miffy. I will ask my daddy to make one for me too. Then we can go scooting together. That will be great fun, said Miffy. Miffy felt very happy as she scooted home for tea. And Grandpa Bunny was very pleased that the scooter was such a great success. The next time that Miffy and her father were at the playground. Melanie arrived with a beautiful new scooter of her own. Her teddy bear had come along for a ride as well. Miffy and Melanie and their teddy bears had a wonderful afternoon. One day, Poppy Pig invited Miffy to her house for tea and biscuits. Miffy asked her mother if she could go. Yes, of course you can go, Miffy, said Mother Bunny. Be careful riding your scooter. It's cold outside and it might be slippery if it starts to snow. I'll be careful, Mother, said Miffy. And I'll be sure to bring some of Poppy's biscuits back for you. Miffy rode her scooter towards Poppy's house. She soon reached Poppy's house with no problem. Poppy had baked some delicious biscuits and made some tea. 
Miffy and Poppy had a lovely time together. Miffy forgot all about the time. Suddenly, the telephone rang. Hello, it's your mother, Miffy, said Poppy. She says you should start to head home because it looks like it will snow. Oh dear, said Miffy. I've had such a good time with you, Poppy, but I really must leave. Miffy put on her coat and her scarf. She was ready to say goodbye to Poppy when she remembered her promise to her mother. Can I take some biscuits home to my mother, please? She asked Poppy. Of course! Poppy put some of the biscuits into a little bag and placed it in the basket on Miffy's scooter. Do be careful riding home on your scooter, Miffy. When Miffy began to ride home, it started to snow. She scooted along as carefully as she could. In a short while, there was so much snow that it became quite slippery. And when she tried to ride down a little hill, boom! Miffy wasn't hurt, but she decided to walk with her scooter the rest of the way home. At home, Mother Bunny was beginning to worry. I hope nothing has happened to Miffy, she thought. Then she saw Miffy. What a relief! She quickly opened the door. Hello, Miffy, said her mother. I'm glad to see that you walked home with your scooter. I started to ride, said Miffy. Then I skidded and fell off my scooter, so I decided to walk the rest of the way. I wasn't hurt at all. I've brought you some of Poppy's delicious biscuits. Miffy looked inside the bag. Where were the biscuits? Oh dear, said Miffy. When I fell down, all of the biscuits got broken. Now there's nothing in the bag but crumbs. Just then, Father Bunny came home. Hello, everyone, he said. There is lovely snow everywhere. It's a perfect time for a sledge ride. Oh, no, said Mother Bunny. That's way too cold for me. I prefer my warm oven. I will bake a fresh batch of your favourite biscuits. They all laughed. Then, while Mother Bunny was busy in the kitchen, Miffy enjoyed a ride on her sledge. It was a lovely summer day, and Miffy asked her mother and father if her friend Grunty could stay with her overnight. Yes, said her mother. And it's warm enough for you both to sleep in the tent in the back garden. Oh, that will be fun, said Miffy happily. Father Bunny said he would take her to Poppy Pig's house to collect her little niece, Grunty. Off they went in Father Bunny's car to Poppy Pig's house. Hello, Poppy said Father Bunny. Miffy would like to invite Grunty to stay with her tonight. You can pack her things and I will drive her to our house. Soon they were driving back to Miffy's house and the two young girls were very excited about sleeping in a tent. When they arrived at Miffy's house, her mother had already set up the tent. It will be such fun, Grunty, said Miffy. I hope you're not afraid of the dark. I won't be scared if you are with me, Miffy, said Grunty. The two little girls snuggled inside their sleeping bags, inside the dark tent. What is that sound? whispered Grunty. I'm scared. It's only the crickets, 
whispered Miffy. They always chirp at night. You mustn't be afraid of them. What is that? whispered Grunty, who was really afraid. That's just an owl who always sits in the tree at night, whispered Miffy. You mustn't be afraid of her. Grunty was afraid, and she said, Why don't we move the tent to Poppy's house tomorrow? I'm used to the sounds in her garden. The two little friends snuggled closer to each other and finally fell asleep. When the morning came, they woke up and Mother Bunny brought them breakfast. Did you sleep well? Mother Bunny asked them. Grunty was afraid of the sounds in our garden, Mother. Can we move the tent to Poppy's house tonight? That evening, Father Bunny packed up the tent and drove the two girls to Poppy Pig's house. Can we put the tent in your garden tonight? Father Bunny asked. Grunty feels she would be more comfortable sleeping in your garden. Miffy is a very brave little bunny, so I don't think she will be afraid. Of course, said Poppy. Later that night, the two friends were tucked into their tent in Poppy's garden. Grunty was at home and fell asleep right away. But not Miffy. She heard noises. Oh dear, whispered Miffy, who was scared. Now I'm afraid. What is that sound? Wake up, Grunty. There's a strange noise I've never heard before. Grunty began to laugh. That's just my Aunt Poppy snoring. I hear that all the time. Now both girls started to laugh. They laughed and laughed until they both fell asleep. Miffy's school teacher was a very nice bunny and all the children loved her. When they found out that it would soon be her birthday, they began to think about what they could make for her. Miffy and her classmates talked about it in the playground. Why don't we sew her a new dress? suggested Aggie. That would be too difficult, said Winnie. We don't know her exact size. How about a huge box of sweets? I love sweets, said Melanie. I think she would like a big ice cream better, said Aggie. Food is a good idea, said Miffy. I think our teacher likes good food. Why don't we make a classroom restaurant for her? Yes, said Melanie. Some of us can be the cooks and some of us can be the waiters. What kind of food shall we make? asked Winnie. How about carrot soup? asked Miffy. My mother will help me to make carrot soup. Soon they all agreed on what each of them would do. Miffy and her mother were soon busy. Chopping carrots and cooking them. They made a large pan of delicious carrot soup. The other bunnies were making waiters aprons and cooks hats. They decorated some dishes for the restaurant table. They wrote a restaurant menu and colored it in. They wanted the teacher's desk to look like a real restaurant table. When the day of the teacher's birthday came, all the little bunnies were giggling and whispering together. Their teacher wondered what was happening in her classroom. Then, all the little bunnies began to sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear teacher. Happy birthday to you. The teacher was so surprised. 
nice of you all to remember, she said. She was very happy. We have a special surprise for you, said Melanie. Yes, we are going to make a birthday restaurant dinner for you, right here in our classroom, said Miffy. So they put a beautiful tablecloth on the teacher's desk and a candlestick and a menu card. The decorated dishes, a glass for water and a knife, a fork and a spoon. Thank you, children, said their teacher. This is a beautiful and original restaurant and I really like it. Then she looked lovingly at all her students. But she felt a little sad that all of her pupils were standing there to watch her eat. So she said, I think I would enjoy this even more if all you cooks and waiters joined in. Why don't you push all your desks together and then we can all sit down at the same table? I think there's enough of this lovely carrot soup for us all. The teacher got some bowls and spoons from the school kitchen and she and all the little bunnies enjoyed the wonderful meal. There was enough delicious carrot soup for everyone. It was the grandest birthday party ever in their classroom. At Miffy's school, the children were learning about nature. Their teacher said, nature can be big things like trees and mountains. It can also be little things that you can find anywhere, even in your garden. Tomorrow, each of you must bring something from nature into our classroom. All the bunny children were excited and they began whispering together, thinking about what they could find. When Miffy arrived home, Father Bunny was in the garden. Father, she said, our teacher wants each of us to bring something from nature to school. What do you think I should bring? Well, just look around you, Miffy. Right here in our garden there is nature all around us. Miffy looked and she saw a bright red apple. She saw birds flying in the sky. She saw a little worm crawling out of the ground. She saw some beautiful stones. And of course, there were many flowers all around. She didn't know what she should choose. Her father said, In the morning, why don't you pick a nice red apple? After you show it to your class, you can eat it for lunch. Miffy thought that was a clever idea. In the morning, she went out into the garden and just as she was about to pick the apple, a beautiful butterfly landed right on her arm. That's it, whispered Miffy. I'll bring this beautiful butterfly to my class. So she walked slowly and quietly towards her school, being very careful not to frighten the butterfly. Good morning, Snuffy, whispered Miffy. You can walk along beside me, but you must be very quiet. Snuffy wagged her tail happily. She gave a little bark. And the butterfly flew away. Miffy was very sad. Everyone else in the class had brought interesting things. Melanie had found an empty bird's nest. Winnie brought some bright, colourful leaves. Aggie had a beautiful stone. They each had something from nature. But Miffy had nothing. Then Snuffy, who was waiting outside the school door, gave another happy bark. And Miffy suddenly had an idea. She raised her hand. Please, miss, 
she said. I did bring something from nature, but I'm not sure I can bring her inside. Her? asked the teacher. Do you have a friend outside? Yes, said Miffy. She's my good friend Snuffy. Isn't a dog a wonderful part of nature? All the other bunnies laughed, and so did the teacher. Yes, Miffy, she said. You are right. Snuffy is a lovely little dog, and she is certainly an important part of nature. Bring her in. One morning, Miffy was awakened by her mother, who whispered, Miffy, get up. Today is your father's birthday, and I want to bake him a chocolate birthday cake. Oh, what fun, said Miffy. Father loves chocolate cake, and so do I. May I help you bake the cake, mother? And may I lick the spoon? Yes, yes, Miffy dear, said Mother Bunny. But the problem is, I have no chocolate and not enough butter or flour. Could you go and ask Auntie Alice for some? Oh, yes, Mother. Auntie Alice is always baking cakes, so she will surely have those things. Mother Bunny gave Miffy a basket and said, Shall I write a list for you? I can remember them by myself. Chocolate? Butter and... and... Flour, said Miffy's mother. Yes, flour, said Miffy. I was just going to say flour. All right, Miffy, off you go, said her mother. But remember, no flour, no cake. Miffy took the basket and repeated to herself. Chocolate, butter, flour. Chocolate, butter, flour. As she walked along, Miffy met Poppy Pig, who was also carrying a basket. Hello, Miffy, said Poppy. Where are you going? Chocolate, butter, flour, said Miffy. You're trying to remember something you need, said Poppy. Me too. I'm on my way to the shops. I must remember to buy some vanilla, cream and flour. I'm on my way to Auntie Alice's house to borrow some chocolate, cream and flour, said Miffy. It's good that you can remember what you need, said Poppy. Vanilla, cream, flour. Vanilla, cream, flour. Then Miffy saw Barbara Bear. Good morning, Miffy, said Barbara Bear. I just came from the shop and I bought some potatoes, milk and sugar. That's interesting, said Miffy. I'm just on my way to my Auntie Alice's house to borrow some vanilla, cream and sugar. Vanilla, cream, sugar. Vanilla, cream, sugar. Vanilla, cream and sugar. Thank you, Auntie Alice, said Miffy. Here you are, Mother, said Miffy. Here is the vanilla, cream and sugar. You see, I remembered everything. Miffy's mother smiled. Are you sure you remembered everything? Where is the chocolate? Where is the butter? Where is the flour? Oh dear, said Miffy. I'm sorry I got all mixed up. Now there will be no chocolate cake for my father's birthday. Don't cry, Miffy dear, said her mother. With the vanilla, cream and sugar, I can make some wonderful birthday ice cream. That evening, when they all sat down for the birthday dinner, Father Bunny said, this vanilla ice cream is delicious. What a splendid idea. Mother gave Miffy a wink and they all enjoyed the birthday ice cream. 
One autumn day, Miffy was on her way to visit Boris and Barbara Bear. Along the way, she saw beautiful yellow, brown and red leaves. How beautiful they look, she thought. I would like to put them into picture frames and hang them on the walls. Miffy began to gather up the most beautiful leaves. By the time she reached Boris and Barbara's house, she had a basket full of them. Hello, Boris. Hello, Barbara. Look what I have. Autumn leaves in many bright colours. She laid them out carefully on Boris and Barbara's kitchen table. Can you help me make some picture frames, please, Boris? Yes, I can, Miffy, said Boris. They will make lovely gifts. So they went out to Boris's workshop to find some nice wood to make the frames with. While they were busy, a breeze blew through the house. Oh dear, said Miffy. Where are all of my leaves? That's funny, said Barbara. But look, Miffy, we still have six leaves left. One, two, three, four, five, six. That will be plenty, said Barbara. Let's go and finish the picture frames. But as they went to finish the picture frames, a bird flew in and took away another leaf. My goodness, said Barbara. We had six leaves left and now we only have five. Boris quickly closed the window. We don't want to lose any more of these beautiful leaves. I have made five frames, so we need five leaves. Well, said Miffy, I think that we still have enough. So they put the five leaves into five frames. Look how beautiful they are, said Miffy. You and Barbara shall have one. Thank you, Miffy, said Boris, and put their framed leaf on the wall. You still have four frames to give us presents. With the four framed leaves packed in a shopping bag, Miffy began to walk home. When she left the forest, she met Poppy Pig. Hello, Miffy, said Poppy. What are you carrying? I found some beautiful leaves in the forest and Boris Bear made five frames for them. I gave them one, so I have four left. Would you like one? Oh, yes, please, said Poppy. May I have a red one? Of course you can, said Miffy. If you take this one, I will still have three frames left. Thank you, Miffy, said Poppy. It's beautiful. When Miffy arrived home, she said, Look, father, look, mother. I found some lovely leaves in the forest and Boris Bear made some frames for them. I would like to give one to each of you. Her mother and father were very pleased and hung the framed leaves on the wall. Miffy still had one frame left. I'll do something very special with this one, said Miffy. It was a very windy day at the beach. Miffy and her father were pulling Miffy's little wagon. But the wind was blowing so hard that it was very difficult to pull. Miffy was very tired from pulling the wagon. Miffy said, Father, isn't this a good place for our tent? Yes, said Father Bunny. But because the wind is blowing so hard, it will be difficult to put up the tent. They work together and soon the tent was up and they put all of their things inside to protect them from the wind. That was difficult, said Miffy. 
But it's very cosy inside here. Yes, Miffy, said Father Bunny. I think we deserve a biscuit now. But we must eat them quickly before everything gets covered with sand. When the biscuits were finished, Miffy and her father went out to play with a ball. But the wind was too strong. Oh no! cried Miffy. My ball will blow into the water. But Father Bunny was able to stop the ball just in time. Throwing the ball is too difficult in this wind, he said. But I have an idea. This wind is perfect for flying a kite. So Miffy went inside the tent and brought out her beautiful red kite. OK, Miffy, said her father. I will hold the kite up high and you will hold on to the string. When the wind blows, I will let go. And if you hold on tight to the string, the kite will fly up in the air. A strong gust of wind blew and father released the kite and it flew high up into the air. The red kite looked beautiful against the blue sky. But the wind was very strong and the kite danced this way and that in the air. It was hard for little Miffy to hold on to the string. She was afraid that the wind would lift her off the ground and up into the air. Hold on tight, Miffy, shouted her father. I'm coming to help you. But he was too late. The kite hit the ground so hard that it was broken and torn. Oh dear, cried Miffy. My lovely kite is smashed. Father Bunny said, Don't cry, Miffy. The wind is too strong at the beach today. I think we should go home. They carefully folded up their tent and put all of their things into the car. Miffy held her broken kite on her lap. She didn't cry anymore, but she was very sad. Miffy's mother made some warm cabbage soup for them. Then Miffy went to bed. She was very tired after her big adventure at the beach. Mother Bunny said to Father Bunny, Do you think you can repair the kite? I will try, said Father Bunny. The next morning when Miffy woke up, she blinked her eyes in astonishment. There, at the end of her bed, was her beautiful red kite, as good as new. My father is so clever, she thought. One morning, Miffy was fast asleep in her bed. She was having a beautiful dream. Suddenly, her mother rushed into her room and said, Miffy, dear, wake up, it's late. You'll be late for school. Miffy quickly sat up and looked at her clock. It was very late. Miffy rushed to her wardrobe. What should I wear, Mother? she said. Just wear anything, said Mother Bunny. You must get dressed very quickly so that you won't be late for school. So Miffy chose her yellow dress. Come and have your breakfast, Miffy, called her mother. I have carrots and tomatoes all ready for you. But when Miffy came into the kitchen, her mother was surprised. Miffy, she said, you have a big spot on your dress. Oh dear, said Miffy, if I have to change my clothes, I'll be later than ever. But you must, said her mother. You should wear clean clothes to school. When you are rushing, everything goes wrong. So Miffy changed into a clean dress. Now I must really run to school, she said. Oh, 
Hold on, Miffy, called her mother. You have forgotten your lunch bag. Before Miffy got very far, she remembered that she had promised her teacher a nice red apple from the tree in her garden. She knew she would be later still, but she ran back home to get the apple. But Miffy could not reach the apple in the tree. Mother, she called, could you please come and pick an apple from the tree for me? I promised to bring one to my teacher. Oh dear, Miffy, said her mother, you're getting later and later. But she picked the apple for Miffy, and off Miffy went again. Miffy ran and ran all the way to school. Oh, I'm so late, she cried. But the door did not open. It was locked. Miffy looked at the playground. It was empty, and there were no scooters parked there. Then there was her mother in the car. Miffy, she called. In our rush, we completely forgot that today is a school holiday. You're not late. There is no school today. Miffy laughed and laughed. You see, Miffy, Mother said, when you are rushing, everything goes wrong. But not everything, said Miffy. Now I have a delicious apple to eat. And tomorrow I'll pick a fresh one for the teacher. Miffy rode home with her mother and enjoyed the rest of her school holiday. One morning, Boris and Barbara Bear were having fun watching Snuffy running and playing outside their house. Snuffy is having a wonderful time, said Barbara. She is such a lively little dog. Then Snuffy wagged her little tail and ran off, barking happily through the woods. On her way to Poppy Pig's house, she passed Melanie, who was riding her scooter to school. Oh dear, said Melanie. Snuffy can run so much faster than I can go on my scooter. She is such a speedy little dog. Snuffy ran round and round Melanie's scooter. Then she gave a happy little bark and ran off towards Poppy Pig's house. Good morning, Snuffy, said Poppy. You certainly are a happy little dog today. Goodness me, said Poppy. I wish I had as much energy as you, Snuffy. Snuffy certainly did love to run and jump, and soon she was running and barking on her way to visit Miffy. But Miffy was not at home. Snuffy ran all around Miffy's house, but she could not find her. Soon Snuffy began to get tired and sleepy. She lay down in Miffy's garden and fell fast asleep. In a little while, Miffy came home from school and saw Snuffy lying there. Snuffy didn't move at all. Miffy was very worried. Snuffy? Snuffy? she called, but Snuffy still did not move. Just then, Poppy Pig came walking by, and Miffy said, Oh, Poppy, look at Snuffy just lying there. I think she must be ill. How come? said Poppy. 
Just this morning she was running and jumping in my garden, so very full of life. But look how very still she is. I think she must be sick. Melanie came riding up on her scooter. Look, Melanie, said Miffy. Snuffy must have something wrong with her. She's just lying there and not moving. Well, she was moving very fast when I saw her this morning. Just at that moment, Boris and Barbara Bear came by, carrying a bag of groceries. Hello, Miffy, said Barbara. Why do you look so sad? I'm worried about Snuffy, said Miffy. She's lying so still. I'm afraid she's ill. But just then, Snuffy opened her eyes and sniffed. Look, said Boris. Snuffy smells the food in our shopping bag. She was just very tired, Miffy. But as soon as she smells good food, she wakes up again. Here is a biscuit for you, Snuffy, said Barbara. After her sleep and the biscuit, Snuffy was ready to run around again. Miffy was happy to see that Snuffy was just fine. Poppy Pig was working hard in her garden. There was a lot of work to be done. The whole garden was covered with fallen leaves. Poppy's niece, Grunty, was sitting nearby reading a book. Can you come and help me, please, Grunty? asked Poppy Pig. Oh, Poppy, said Grunty, I'm so tired. How can you be tired? asked Poppy. You haven't done anything all day except read that book. So please, come and help me. You can rake all the leaves into a heap. So Grunty began to rake the leaves. But it was hard work, and she huffed and puffed and soon had to sit down again. You must finish the job, Grunty, said Poppy. We must clear all the leaves up today. There are too many leaves and it's such hard work, said Grunty. Just then, Miffy came walking by. May I help you, said Miffy. I see that you have a lot of work to do. Oh yes, said Grunty. We would be very happy if you could help us. Oh, yes, please, said Poppy. Grunty says she's too tired to do any work. Perhaps she'll find that doing the work together is more fun. I like to rake leaves, said Miffy. They make such a nice crunchy sound. Grunty and Miffy raked the leaves together. pile became bigger and bigger. What's great fun, said Miffy, is to jump on the pile of leaves and sink right down inside. I will show you. Oh dear, said Grunty. Now we have to rake the leaves all up again. But it's fun, said Miffy. I'll rake them back into a pile, and this time you can jump into them. Well, all right, said Grunty. Is it really fun? Try it, said Miffy. Grunty laughed and laughed. You are right, Miffy, Grunty said. It is great fun. And soon Miffy and Grunty were taking turns, raking, running and jumping in the leaves.
then the telephone rang. Poppy went to answer it. When she returned, she said, That was Miffy's mother. She asked if Miffy could come home and rake the grass. Oh, said Grunty. May I go and help her, Poppy? And Poppy Pig said, But Grunty, I thought you were too tired. Yes, I was, but I'm not anymore, said Grunty. So she promised to go and help Mother Bunny because raking leaves really is a lot of fun. On her first day at school, Miffy's teacher said, Children, today we'll plant seeds in flower pots on the window ledge, and during the year we will watch them grow into lovely flowers. Miffy was very surprised when the teacher handed her a little black seed. How can a little black seed become a pretty flower? It's the magic of nature, said her teacher. Everything living starts from a tiny seed. In the seed is everything that can help it to become a flower. When we put it in the ground, we must water it so that it grows. Every day Miffy watched her pot. First, a very tiny bit of green showed above the black soil. Then small leaves began to form. Then, in just a few weeks, a tiny bud of colour appeared. And in another couple of days, it opened up into a real flower. Miffy wondered if everything she planted in the ground would grow into something nice. That evening, while Miffy was helping her mother with the dishes, she told her how wonderful it was to see a flower grow from a tiny black seed. Yes, said Mother Bunny. Tomorrow, your father will plant some seeds and you will see flowers grow again right here in our own garden. Miffy was so excited that she dropped a cup and it broke into pieces. Oh dear, said Miffy. I'm so sorry, Mother. I broke one of our lovely cups. She began to cry, but Mother Bunny said, Don't cry, Miffy dear. I know it was just an accident. The next day, Miffy thought, if a lovely flower can grow from a little seed, perhaps if I plant a piece of the cup in the ground, a new one will grow. When Miffy's father was planting seeds in their garden, Miffy asked, If I plant a piece of the broken cup, will a new one grow? I don't think so, Miffy, said Father Bunny. But you can try it. So Miffy watched the little garden every day, just for fun, hoping that maybe a new cup would really grow. Gradually, many beautiful flowers appeared, but no cups. Miffy's father and mother knew that Miffy would be disappointed, so Father Bunny had an idea. When he came home that evening, he had bought a new cup. While Miffy was sleeping, he buried the new cup where Miffy had put the broken piece. In the morning, Father Bunny said, Miffy, I think something is really coming up where you planted the piece of broken cup. Miffy ran outside as fast as she could go. Sure enough, there was a bright yellow cup handle sticking up out of the ground. Miffy pulled it out and was very surprised. I know that only living things can grow from the ground, she said. Mother and father laughed and Father Bunny said, Yes, Miffy dear, that is true. I bought that new cup and put it into the ground just as a little joke. And they all laughed. One morning, Father Bunny was reading the paper. 
Wouldn't it be nice if Snuffy could stay with us sometime? Miffy asked her father. It would be nice, said Father Bunny. But we must first build a little house for her to stay in. Boris Bear has lots of wood, said Miffy. I will go on my scooter and ask him if he can give us enough to make a doghouse. So Miffy took her scooter and set out for the forest where Boris and Barbara Bear lived. When she got there, she told Boris they would like to build a doghouse for Snuffy. Boris said, What a nice idea! Of course I will give you the wood, and I will also cut the wooden parts for you. So all you have to do is nail them together. Oh, you are very kind, Boris, said Miffy. That will make it easy for us. So Boris took some wooden boards and measured them. Then he cut them into just the right size and shape so that they could be put together to make a doghouse. Oh, thank you, Boris, said Miffy. Miffy rode home on her scooter. She told her father what Boris was doing. Boris is very kind and clever, but he can't carry all those wooden parts to our house. Let's go and pick them up in our car. Father Bunny and Boris carefully put all of the parts of the doghouse into the back seat of the car. Father Bunny thanked Boris and then he and Miffy set off home. When they arrived, Father Bunny laid all of the parts out in the garden. Now let's see, said Father Bunny. This piece must be part of the roof. And this could be a wall, said Miffy. One piece after another, they began to put the doghouse together. It looks a little strange, said Father Bunny. There is no doorway for Snuffy to get inside. Yes, said Miffy, and there is a big hole in the roof. I don't think we have it quite right, said Miffy's father. Boris didn't give us an instruction sheet. Just then, Boris arrived. I thought I'd better come and help you, he said. I wasn't sure if you'd know how to put the doghouse together. Boris was a clever bear. He quickly took all the pieces apart and put them together in a different way. And look, there was a cosy doghouse for Snuffy. They all laughed at how easy that was. Along came Snuffy. A little house just for you, Snuffy, said Miffy. Snuffy loved her new doghouse and enjoyed her stay at Miffy's. Mm -hmm.